So folks, one of the reasons we gotta tighten our bags up, this system here is supposed to be draping on your neck, just like that. With oh, that so this is too low. Yeah. That's why. So what that prevents is your shoulder blades, if you wanna film me, what happens is your shoulder blades are gonna pull backwards and that's why you're feeling a lot of strain on your neck is because your traps are being overworked carrying all of that workload. So that's partially due to the sternum trap not being tight against your chest, but your shoulder blades are being pulled back and you're holding this position for a long period of time with however many pounds of weight you got inside that backpack. So always make sure it's draped over your neck because then we can we can relax and we can do our walking. When I'm tossing the bag on, typically what I'll do because gravity's taking a hold and pulling the bag down, I like to lean over and then I like to tighten it because what that's gonna do is it's gonna promote that, that yoke system to be as high up as possible and we pull down. Holy cow. And that's all we do. And now it's nice and tied up against me. All right, I'm gonna try that. What you do is you lean over okay. and you toss that bag up a little high. Yep, that's perfect. Right yep, perfect. And then what you do is you ratchet those straps down. Holy cow. And then lift back up. Wow. Folks, look, we see we had no bag drop back down. That's one of the perfect ways to get your bag assembled the way that you need to on your back. I just learned something new. Yep, I solid. Never knew that. It's so much better. So when you have other bigger backpacks, these are like day packs, but when you're going really gung-ho with, with a big 55 liter or a 60 liter backpack, more often than not, they'll have a big um, strap wrapping around your waist. The, the market, uh, the reason behind that is it's resting all of the weight of the backpack vertically on your pelvic bone. So what I do is I, I clip that in and I strap that down before I even lean over. So after I have that ratcheted down, I do my lean, I do my tighten down, and more often than not, they'll have excess straps here in order to pull the top of the, the bag load closer to your body. So I pull those, and then I pull this, and then I clip my sternum strap, lean over, and then I tighten. And then your bag is gonna be perfectly tight with you. You don't wanna have any loose baggage. You don't want your shoulders to be pulled really far back. You're just gonna strain yourself and you're asking for a back strain. So definitely make sure it's nice and tight up against your body. Yeah, I think that's self-explanatory. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> All right, next. <laughs> so I have two items. I have what's called a space blanket. This is just basically a thermal blanket that's supposed to reflect your thermal heat and your energy back into you. So if you're in a really cold climate, I'm talking like 40 degrees and below, definitely recommend this. Um, the color I chose is orange. A lot of guys go for just the plain old silver. I like orange in case I ever find myself in a scenario where I get lost. I can peel this apart or I can tie it to a tree and somebody can find out where I have been or where I'm going or I can do the same exact thing. So parts of it rips off? No, you, you can cut it off. Oh, I got but, you. Yeah, okay. that's just okay. a, a me thing. But yeah, so I like orange just because you can easily find it. So this thing opens up into a big tarp, you know, and it definitely works really well for, for keeping warm. Gotcha. This is just an emergency poncho. I use this for uh, two things. Obviously, number one, if it's raining and I need to protect my gear, or number two, if I'm out of water and my containers are either broken or I've lost it along the way, I can rubber band this off or tie it off and I can actually make a little a little bag in order to, to pull or store water for myself. So this is all just my survival stuff. Cool. Why don't you have two of those then? Because if you have to rip one and then if it rains again, you're screwed. You should get another one. I could possibly use my space blanket. There are tons of different things that you can use. All right. I'm just being stupid. No, absolutely. That. You're totally fine. <laughs> You're totally good. All right. What's next? So next, um, I have a couple of lights that I like to travel with. This is just company Ozark Trail. This is just a little oh, look at that. pull tab luminescent light. So if I'm ever in my tent or when I'm not camping with a tent and I'm just laying in the middle of the ground, then I can hook this from a tree branch or the inside of my tent and it helps illuminate wherever I need to see. So all you do is you just unscrew this little base panel here. Ah, oh, okay. You get your triple A's. This came in a three pack at Walmart. There's a bigger one that I have at home too. How long did it last for? Oh shoot, I have no clue. I've had this thing for months and it hasn't run out yet, so. Really? Me, I always, as a good tip, um, if you do not need light, um, do not use it. You know, it's let your eyes adapt at night if you even turn on a light, your eyes have to readapt over a course of hours. So definitely harness that and just let your eyes adapt to the night. And if you really need something like you hear a twig snap and you know that there's an animal nearby, get that flashlight out, get whatever you need, but conserve your battery life because you may need that. 
Other flashlights I have, this is just a 500 lumen Duracell one, battery operated as well, not a recharge. Um, I use this if I am in like absolute pitch black where there's no light pollution. So Vegas is known for like light pollution and everything. You can see that thing from miles. You can even see it from Charleston here. If you're camping at night, you'll see all the lights of Vegas. So I carry a really bright flashlight just in case I'm out in the middle of nowhere. And then I have a little pen light as well. This does a perfect circle. So just in case I'm reading or I just need to search for something really quick around my tent, I just click this on and I'm good. This is something I can carry in my pocket every day and I'm solid. And then last but not least, this is just my everyday carry flashlight. This attaches to my hat just in case I need it. And this is about a 200 lumen flashlight operated with just a double A battery. So really accessible, easy to use. I got flashlights on flashlights on flashlights. Now talking about conserving battery life, I always like to carry some glow sticks. Smart. Yeah, so these are actually mil-spec glow sticks. They each last 12 hours. The yellow ones, in my opinion, glow a lot um, brighter. But the green one, they have it in green. They got it in orange and, of course, yellow. Um, this is called a chemical, uh, chemical light. If you ever want to just hold on to your battery life and you don't ever, you know, want to utilize a flashlight, then you can definitely strap this onto your backpack. You can strap this onto your tent. So say you walk off and you're collecting something like firewood or water or just using the bathroom right in the middle of the night, it's easy to find your tent at night. Just, just hook on, just like the ones you use at Halloween when you're crossing the roads and everything. So definitely get you a couple of these. They're like $3 a pop, but definitely well worth a 12 hour time span on that. Nice. Just because we're doing a day hike today, I only have two power bars just to keep me going but more often than not, I'll have a bunch of dehydrated meals with me too. So I always recommend carry a good amount of food. Just if you're going for say like a day hike, carry maybe a day or two's worth of food with you. If you're going on a three day hike, possibly carry maybe four days worth just in case something goes bad or you miss cook or burn something. I've been there, I've definitely done that. Um, so yeah, just to keep yourself covered because we never want to be hungry. When we're hungry, we get stressed. When we're stressed, it's a bad situation overall. So. <laughs> This is some good information you're giving right now. Thank you. About to put you on payroll. <laughs> <laughs> so me, I just got a spare carabiner. This is a 511 one. It just hooks into Molly. So if I ever wanted to attach, say, this lantern, I can easily do that by threading it through one of the Molly panels or onto one of the straps on my bag. Just easy to carry an extra one, too. Cool. This is also good, too, um, for pre preventing animals from coming too close into your... Um, into your camp. So a lot of black bears will tend to smell food and then they get curious and they come into your camp. Typical rule of thumb is keep your food six feet away from your camp, uh, away from the tree trunks, my bad. You're stringing it on a tree uh, is where you're putting your food. I like to string it up with a carabiner. You do it six feet away from the trunk and then six feet off of the ground so the bear cannot grab that. Bears will be able to climb trees and if it's within arm's length, they're gonna get it down and you're out of luck on your food. So definitely make sure to have a spare car carabiner. It's something I always recommend. For this, this is just a simple Schrade Diamondback sharpener. Again, another thing, I usually carry camping axes, so I'll scrape the camping axe on here and just make sure that it's well treated. But if you're ever sharpening your knife, you're just grazing it over, just like that, and then the reverse. Or your arrowhead. Or my arrowhead. <laughs> Anything you need sharpening, this will definitely do that for you. Nice. And of course, I carry a little sewing kit with me. Yeah, I've Did, heard about that too, just in case you get a rip in well, your pants ripping, or something. Either a rip in my clothes. Um, the cordage is really good to braid. If, if your shoelace ever per se breaks, you can wrap enough of it and make a makeshift shoelace with that. Um, say a uh, tarp rips, you can use this to sew together a tarp. It's really well for that. Or a tent. If something falls and rips through your tent, I've had situations where... I had built a fire way too close to my tent and an ember flies and starts a burn on there. Of course, when you get the burn out, it's always nice to be able to stitch that back together so wind and rain and other elements don't get in. So that makes for a good question. How far should the fire pit be from your tent? So depending on wind speeds, if it's a high wind area, number one, I would put your um, your tent or your shelter uh, upwind from your fire so that those embers, like I was saying, don't fly near your tent whatsoever. Um, I usually recommend it keeping it at least 10 feet away from your tent. That's just something I do. Some guys do it a little bit further just to maintain that area. Um, but typically rule of thumb would be about 10 feet would okay. be a really good, unless you're in a really cold environment. Um, is that, I, time out. Is that your rule of thumb or is that like, that's, that's my rule of or thumb. Or is that standard rule of thumb? That, that's my rule of thumb.
keep it around 10 feet away. Okay. Um, if you find yourself in a situation where, say, you don't have a tent and you're camping it outdoors, I definitely recommend getting a way to, to set that fire up in order to reflect that heat back to you. You can go right up against your, your camp. You just don't go over top. So if you have, say, a hammock, don't build a fire pit underneath it. You're going to be burnt. <laughs> you're going to be cooking in that hammock. So definitely move that away from wherever you're resting um, and definitely away from any spare brush just like this, this will easily catch fire, which is probably why we had a 5,000 acre forest fire up here in Mount Charleston because somebody wasn't careful. Another tip, I always recommend keeping a nice um, amount of water right next to it in case a fire gets out of hand. You just unscrew the top and you just pour it right on top and stomp the embers out. Another rule of thumb for your fires, so no fires are starting out in the middle of nowhere and creating a forest fire. I'd recommend always stomping your fire out. Do not leave your camp if a fire is going. That's just a recipe for disaster. Always make sure every single ember is stomped out. Make sure that, the uh, you know, just make sure that you're you're cleaned up and you're good. Yeah, makes sense. So that's what we got. Are we done? Nope. We still have one more left. It's amazing how much stuff Cole has in that boot bag of his. Once again, everyone, thank you for watching. I hope you're taking in some of this knowledge. See you on the next one. Peace.